light bulb that we're replacing today is a turn signal slash parking bulb for the 2014 GMC Sierra SLE with the standard headlights. We're going to use model Sylvania 7443 standard bulb as opposed to a LED option just because the LED option on the back of the package mentions how you may need a resistive circuit installed. I haven't done this before so I'm just going to change it with the standard bulb that is OEM in the vehicle now. The blinker function still functions but the parking function does not so we're going to replace the bulb so that all of our parking lights are functioning back the way they're supposed to. Here's a quick view of the back of the lights without any panels removed or anything and you can kind of see the round areas where the backs of the headlight bulbs themselves are removed but this doesn't give you much help when trying to remove those parking lights. Be sure to give your engine compartment some time to cool off or put a fan under it like I did. You want that engine to be a little bit cooled off before you start sticking your elbows or your arms anywhere inside of it to get these lights replaced. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you what it looks like from behind. You can see this hole in the side panel here. Uh, that You can get to the back of the bulb through there. You can see the headlight replacement right here. It's off to the side of that. Now, you can get your hand down in there and feel where that connector is. And I'm going to remove this panel and show you about where that is. There are a few of these retention clips that are holding this panel down. You gotta remove those retention clips because we need to see what's under here. To do that, I use these little retention clip remover tools. You can get them on Amazon, they're very cheap. I trust this more than a flathead screwdriver just because of how many of these I've broken. So we're gonna remove these. There are two, four, six, eight, ten, about a dozen. We're gonna remove those carefully because you don't wanna break them because you need to put them back on. If you can't put them back on, you're gonna get some rattle noise under your hood and it's gonna be very frustrating and I'm sure you could buy some more of these, but why when you can just be careful with the ones you got. Pop off the top, remove it. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. Pops out there, snaps in, expands, holds the deal down. Save these up in your little extra spare bucket on the side so that you don't lose them. Now that you've gotten all your little retention clips out, this little cover should just pop right off. Take it off and set it aside. Now we'll be able to see inside the back side of the light a little bit. Now this is the tricky part. We're going to see if you could see the back side of that light fixture. Now. Looking from the inside the engine compartment, you can see this wheel panel, wheel weld access panel thing that's open automatically. I stuck my flashlight in there so we can kind of see the back of the fixture of the light bulb that we're trying to get to. And let's see if I can focus on where it is. That is the wires and the back of the fixture. And it's just like a standard bulb replacement fixture. It has some little notches on it so you can grab it and turn it. 
and unsnap it. So I found the easiest way to get to it is to use your left hand, reach around inside of that panel, and you'll be able to feel where it is back in there. Put your hands on the two notches and give it a spin. See if I can focus. You heard it click. I'm going to pull it out now and you'll be able to see exactly what it is we're working with. And there it is. You can see it's just your standard little bulb with its notches that you use to turn it and the little gasket. Now I'm going to get some gloves on, get the new one and replace this bulb. I'm just going to remove this bulb. by pulling it. Set it aside. And it just plugs right back in, just like the old one. You'll hear it snap, should be good to go. And now we're gonna try to fish it back in that hole and see if we could turn it and lock it back in. So now we're going to take the bulb, fish it back through the back, feel around for the socket that it goes in. It is kind of tough to get to, especially if you're right-handed like me, but just remember it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, it clicks in. And that's pretty much it. The bulb is in place, now we could test and make sure that it actually works. And that's the driver's side, side marker, parking light replacement. Now, if you're one of the unfortunate folks who has the passenger side marker light failed, it's a little tougher to get to. You have to, of course, remove this air intake, not too hard, it's here, this bar, and that's gonna give you the same fender well access door that you had on the other side. This crossbar has to be removed because this air box intake has to come up so that you can get your arm back into this access panel. To do that, crossbar is a 10 millimeter. Uh, you, you really don't have to take the whole thing off. You could just take one side off and spin it around. Make sure you keep your screws in your little cup so that you don't lose them. Spin this around like this, just out of the way. You have some hoses here that are gonna be a little bit in the way. They're flexible. So no big deal. What I like to do is I like to pull this back off of the air intake box, which means you have to remove this little idle air control valve or whatever it is so that you don't stress the plug. And we'll take that off first. Clip goes up, upwards. Plug comes right out when you push your finger on the button. See this button here? Push your finger down on that button, pull up, it comes up. Just secure that out of the way for now. Now we're gonna remove this from the air intake box so that we can remove the air intake box and get our arm down in there without pulling these hoses. This little metal collar uses a seven millimeter or an eight millimeter. We're just gonna loosen it a little just to slide it back like that. Now your air intake box should pop right out the top. Set it aside. We'll put that back later. Here's our air box. Put it off to the side. 
this will pop right out. If you're not, there's some little clips that hold this thing in, but they're very simple to get out. So this should be able to move right out of your way. We'll set that aside. Now, same drill here. Light bulb is down in here. We're gonna be able to get to it through here with our right hand this time. Reach in there and you could feel the two clips that are holding it that you have to undo to get the bulb out. So let's get that bulb out. There we go. I got it. There it is. So now what we'll do is we'll pop it out. Grab our new one. Plug her right in there. Now we got to get it back in. Righty tighty. Here we go. All right. Plugging it in was much easier than taking it out. All right, testing the passenger side. We'll put the key in, give her a quick turn, put it on parking. Let's go have a look. Looks good. Let's give her a turn signal just to make sure that both parts are working. Nice. Now we just got to get this air box, put it back in its area, plug back in the mass airflow sensor, hook back up the air intake hose, and we'll be done. All right, so now we're going to put the little air box grommet housing thing back in where it belongs. For me, it just kind of fits there. I wish it wasn't broken, but it is. So mine just kind of sits there. I don't have anything to hold it in place. You can see these things broke. Uh, they go inside of this air intake here and it would clip in, but uh, I don't have that anymore. You may want to take this time to replace your air filter while you're doing this. Save you some, some trouble later. So here's what we'll do. We're going to lay this back in. Careful of our mass airflow sensor. Wiggle it into place. So that you're back inside of the housing. And yours will fit in snugger than mine. I'm gonna put this back on. Not too tight, but just to keep the air from slipping around the outsides. Take our mass airflow sensor cable. Carefully plug it back in. Be sure not to go sideways or crooked. Those pins are sensitive. Snap down your lock. Take your ring that holds it in place snap it back in its little retention hole. Okay, don't forget your bar. Swing it back around. It fits underneath the screw. This is a 10 millimeter. Slides right back into place. Kind of just sits on top and that's fine. Uh, that's what all of your little clips are for that go in these holes here. Adding the clips back is very simple. Make sure that they are popped out of their normal position. Place it in the hole. Push the bottom collar part down. Take your thumb. Drop the top in. These little things get stuck. Just use your tool, pop them back out. Don't try to force it in there. 
without popping it out first. There we go. Of course, the last one. I want it to be one ring. Well, guys, that does it. That's the side marker parking lights on a GMC Sierra 2014 SLE. Uh, side marker light bulb, model 7443. Uh, you don't have to take all the panels off, you can. If you do take the panels and the grill off, it'll probably be much easier to get the light bulb, but I, I don't know, I don't like taking clips off. So take off the top, reach your hand back there, grab that driver side bulb, snap it off, put the new one in, remember to wear gloves. Passenger side's a little more difficult, you got to remove the air box, you may as well change your air filter while you're in there. Well, hope this helps someone. I don't think it's against the law to have these parking lights out as long as your signal light still functions. But you may just want to replace it anyways, just to avoid having any run-ins with the law that are unnecessary. I would imagine it would go something like this. Son, do you know why I pulled you over? What seems to be the problem, officer? Your light bulb 7443 is out. Light 7443? On the front of your car? I wasn't aware of that. What light 7443? Step out of the vehicle, son. 